have your Bibles, would you please uh, go with me to the Gospel of Matthew? Gospel of Matthew. Your pastor and I have been pastoring the same amount of years, and uh, we're both in pre midlife crisis. Amen. So pray for us. If you have your Bibles, I direct your attention to Matthew 17. And ask that you'll stand for the reading of God's word. Matthew 17. We honor all of the preachers of the gospel that are here on tonight. Thank you. Matthew 17, commencing at verse 24. After Jesus and his disciples arrived in Capernaum, the collectors of the two drachma tax came to Peter and asked, doesn't your teacher pay the temple tax? Yes, he does, he replied. When Peter came into the house, Jesus was the first to speak. What do you think, Simon, he asked. From whom do the kings of the earth collect duty and taxes? From their own sons or from others? From others, Peter answered. Then the sons are exempt, Jesus said to him. But so that we may not offend them, go to the lake. Throw out your line. Take the first fish you catch. Open its mouth. And you'll find a four drachma coin. Take it and give it to them. I'm getting ready to pay off my taxes and yours. Yes, you may be seated. Yes, I want to preach for a little while tonight using as a subject, you got to stick with it this time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got to stick with it this time. Would you look at the person beside you and tell them, I know it's been hard. But you gotta stick with it this time. My dear friends, it feels like not long ago we used to have presidents who would impart pearls of wisdom to the populace of this nation and not spew hate speech and alternative truths. One such commander in chief was Calvin Coolidge who once quipped, nothing in this world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is often a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. He concludes persistence and determination are almost omnipotent. Founding father Benjamin Franklin furthered Energy and persistence conquer all things. Energy and persistence conquer all things. Stripped from the pages of a book penned by Lee and Julie Colin entitled Stick With It, How to Win with Any Strategy. Disclose that although New Year's is a season for fresh starts and beginnings, 35% of New Year's resolutions are broken before Dr. King's birthday. 35% of all New Year's resolutions are broken before Dr. King's birthday. And only 23% of people who make a New Year's resolution keep them at all. That is largely because we fall within the knowing versus doing gap. 
Ernst & Young found that a full 66% of corporate strategy, hear this, 66% of corporate strategy is never executed. Robert Kaplan revealed 90% of well-formulated strategies fail due to poor execution. Nobody mentions two significant things. The first is this, Bishop, and it's going to blow your mind as it did mine, is that leaders, leaders are trained to plan, but we are not trained to execute. So the problem is a whole lot of our staff and a whole lot of our leaders around us, they got the plan. They just don't know how to execute it. Here's the thing that was convicting even for me. That execution requires more time, hear this, than planning. Execution takes more time than planning does. Strategy is just one step. But execution is the escalator. A whole lot of us have a strategy for our success. And the problem is nobody told us how to execute it. I know the Bible says write the vision, but that does not negate you working the vision. You've got to get to a place in your life where you are utterly convinced that it's going to work this time. I just need 200 of you who are in this place. Would you just declare out loud, I've got to make it work. Now, you don't sound convincing at all. I'm, I'm not talking about making this sermon work. I'm talking about your plan, your dream, your idea, your passion. Let's try it again. Everybody in the room, would you declare it aloud? I've got to make it work. 97% of employees are people who quit their dreams to work for the 3% that didn't. You just missed what I just said. 97% of employees are people who quit their dreams to work for the 3% that didn't. For many of you, your salary was the ransom you paid to give up on your dream. That you would rather get a safety net than own the boat. And now God is squeezing you. And you have become uncomfortable in a place he never ordained. And you're trying to figure out why am I stressed out about a job I don't care about. Oh, Y'all not going to say anything to me. Why? Why am I having to fight with people over something they don't possess? Why am I having to hide my actual intellect to hang out with people with mediocre talent? Why am I forced to be friends with people who have no drive. And so my greatest level of prayer doesn't happen at church. It happens on my way to work. Where I got to talk myself out of not going postal. And make up in my mind, I am not going to kill nobody today. And what they don't even realize, I didn't come to this job to make friends. This is just seasonal for me, so you, you don't even know. You can't threaten me with something I don't even want. I'm, th this is just transition for me, and I'm, I wish I could talk to 50 of you that know that there is something in me that is not my job. But God, you ain't got to open the door. If you even crack the door, watch me kick that bad boy down because there's something in me that can't get any peace about being in some place I know I don't belong. And the strange thing about God, I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. 
The strange thing about God is God calls you to do something that doesn't match your training. God help me. He calls you to do something that is not consistent with your background, your education. You don't even have a mentor in it. All you know is God keeps waking you up and giving you a clear vision about what you're supposed to do. And you're trying to stay focused because you can see yourself doing it and it hasn't even happened yet. In your spirit, you already know the name of the business. You already got the name of the book. You can already see the nonprofit. And you keep telling yourself, if I can ever get it off the ground, I know I'm going to rewrite my whole economic trajectory. And God said, you don't even know what the last three years of your life has been about. I done put the squeeze on you so you would realize this is not what I got for your life. That if you don't take a move of faith, I'll get you fired. If you don't step out on what I've called you to do I'll keep getting you looked over for the promotion if you don't trust me you'll have money but you'll be unhappy but I've got something greater in store one of the deadliest subliminal spells you can fall under is the notion to take your time Timing is absolutely everything. There's a time for everything, and if this isn't the fact, you, you, you're going to miss it. I just need 80 of you to just lay hands on yourself and declare out loud, it's my time now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some, something you just woke up, you get ready to get it, I. You done helped everybody else. You done poured into other people. You've supported others' vision. I can't hear nobody. You done pushed folk that didn't appreciate it. You, you gave your all to people that didn't deserve it. But I need somebody to shout out loud. It's my time now. Everything has timing. Milk is, um, milk is healthy until it expires. Because milk only has a certain amount of time that it can function at its greatest capacity. Library books have time. You, you can read it, but you have to return it because you don't even own it. It's just long for somebody else to have it. I need to say to 70 of you that are in this room uh, that rented movies have time. Hallelujah. You download it on your iPad. You only got 30 days. And then it expired. Y'all not going to like it. Even after you've paid for it. It's only for a limited amount of time. Mothers who are in the room understand that pregnancy has time. Hallelujah. You can only keep it in you for so long before what's in you has got to come out of you. I'm only talking to 30 of you. I hope I can confirm something for you. You know it's your time. You just got confused. You are not under attack. You're not under attack. You're just in labor pain. That what's in you is fighting to come out of you. And you, you didn't even realize that these nine months have gone by so fast. That, that no matter what anybody around you thinks, says, or believes, is still coming out of you. I'm not talking to regular people tonight. I'm talking to gifted people who just need an opportunity. That just need a stage to flow and to function in your gift. God said, I'm tired of folk passing you that don't even have your skill set whatever is in you is getting ready to come out of you hallelujah just just so your soul can hear it would you just declare it again it's my time now and because timing is everything thank you holy god i feel you now because timing is everything. I hope 70 of you will get it. I need you to know tonight the enemy missed his time. 
Hallelujah. The time that was allocated to destroy you has passed. Whatever he was going to do, he should have did it by last night. But if you can hear my voice, God said, I just reset the clock. I need you to look down your row and tell him I survived one of the hardest times of my life. I, I came through a time that if God wasn't with me, I would have lost everything. But God sustained me. It's my time now. Ah, be seated, please. Thank you. Hallelujah. Just, just 30 of you. I need y'all to rock with me. 30 of you. Just shout out loud. It's my time now. Yes. God, I can't hear nobody. I need you to say it with authority. It's my time now. I'm, I'm supposed to own my own business. I'm supposed to have my own house. I'm supposed to be living at a level of comfort. It's my time now. In Matthew, Jesus and his disciples arrived in town. And when Jesus and his disciples arrive in town, hear me, they're met by two IRS agents. And the IRS agents approach Peter. And they ask him, hear me very carefully, about temple tax. The reason why this is so important is that I am afraid that too many homileticians have misappropriated the tax, that this is not a tax for the government. Uh, this is the mandatory stipulated tax. Hear this. We know it as tithes. Uh, and the tithe is appropriate in Jerusalem for every person over 20. And at the time of our text, Jesus is 31. And they're asking him, how are you working in the ministry? Some of y'all not going to like this. How are you working in the ministry and you're not a tither? God, God, God I can't hear nobody. How, how, how are you up leading people and you're not a tither? How, how are you boasting on the glory of God and you're not a tither? All the non-tithers be quiet. But God said, because you've been faithful over a few things, I'm about to make you ruler. Over many. The, the, the government has spoken a curse over the body. Hallelujah. Pastor, what did you just say? I said the government has spoken a curse over the body. And regrettably, we have digested it. Uh, what, what, what is that curse, Pastor? That curse is called non-profit. God, help me that you you just living from paycheck to paycheck. Hallelujah, but I speak over the life of just 50 of you who are in this room that you get ready to go from the lean years to the harvest. That God said your cup is getting ready to run over. Now those of y'all that have not been under financial restraint, please don't shout with us. But God said you proved to me in 2015 and 2016 that even when times were tight, I still bless God. Even when I didn't have the money, I still gave him my best. The IRS agents, they go to Peter. They go to Peter, hear me very carefully, and they say to Peter, you don't even know you being audited. And this is our last notification before um, we have to move into legality. And uh, notice that they said it to Peter but didn't say it to Jesus. There are some people who are so intimidated about you that they'll talk about you but never talk to you. Only five of y'all gonna feel me on this. Watch this. Uh, isn't it amazing how many people who don't like you but don't know you? 
if you got a question, ask me. You ain't got to talk to nobody else. Ask me. And Jesus says something amazing. Watch what Jesus says. Jesus says, the anointing on my life is so heavy that I am not going to exert any energy debating about money. And can you imagine that for the rest of this year, from this night until December 31st, you will have no issues about finance. Oh God, I can't hear nobody. You just missed your point to shout. I said from this night until December 31st, no bill collector is calling. No checks are going to be bounced. No negotiation for an extension. You ain't going to have to borrow nothing from nobody. All of your bills are going to be paid and paid on time. You got too much to do. To worry about money. So he tells Peter, go to the lake. Watch this. And throw out a line. Tells Peter, go to the lake, throw out a line into the sea. The line, watch this, is a fishing rod, hear this, with a hook. Um, and, and, and you don't even understand these directions, how perplexing they are for Pete, because Pete is a professional fisherman. And as a professional fisherman, it is his to throw out a net. And God gives him instructions that is contrary to his training. Says, I know with a net you can get more. God help me. But I need you to just throw out a line that has a hook on it. Hallelujah. For 15 of you, I need you to hear me very carefully. God told me to tell you, I flew from Baltimore just to tell you tonight, that you got a hook. Mm -hmm. There is a gift that you have that is so amazing that you don't need a whole bunch of stuff. You just need one thing to work for you. And God says, I'm tired of you being overstressed. I'm tired of you working two to three jobs and having nothing to show for it. But for five of y'all that are tear up your role, God said, whatever you are anointed to do, you're going to be paid to do. All you needed was a hook. You needed one book. You need one song. You need one play. You need one one grant, you need one opportunity, all you need is a hook. Notice this, the hook, ladies and gentlemen, watch this, the hook is at the end of the string. Y'all going to sleep on me in Boston. God says, I don't give you the hook till you get to the end of your rope. God, I can't hear nobody. The greatest blessing is for the people in the room that have been frustrated, but you ain't been seeing nothing happen. But God said, I'm getting ready to shut up the mouth of every person that didn't think you were going to survive. I need you to give God glory that I'm frustrated, but I trust you. I can't stand where I am, but I still believe. Hallelujah. Be seated, please. He says, I'm not giving it to you till you're at the end of your rope. Hallelujah. And you're going to start pulling stuff in. Hallelujah. I feel glory getting ready to come tonight. I say, you're going to start pulling it in. Hallelujah. I dare you to just pull on your neighbor and say, whatever you've been going after, you're getting ready to pull it in. Before the 4th of July, whatever you prayed for, you are about to pull it in. Whatever you wrote in your prayer journal, you are about to pull it in. Whatever you woke up in the morning about, you are about to pull it in. If you've been going after something, I need you to pull it in. I said pull in the scholarship. Pull in the opportunity. Pull in the stay. God help me. Pull it in. Huh. 
Both Jesus and Peter had a debt. Both Jesus and Peter had a debt. God help me, please be seated. I'm coming to get you. Both Peter and Jesus had a debt. And he said, I need you, watch this, to throw your hook in. God, y'all not going to like this. Hallelujah. And with this one move, Pete, it ain't just going to bless you. Thank you, Holy God. But it's going to bless me too. Hallelujah. Whoever is sitting next to you tonight ought to be glad they're sitting next to somebody that got that much anointed. God said when this next blessing come, it ain't just for you. But you're going to pay off somebody else's debt. I need you to look at your neighbor and say, you better shout with me. Because when I pull this next thing in, it's going to be exceedingly. It's going to be abundantly. Beyond. Be seated, please. Thank you, Holy God. Would you be seated right where you are? Hallelujah. Be seated right where you are. I need you to pull on your neighbor and say, neighbor, there's an overflow anointing on me. When God moves this next time, it ain't just for me, but whoever's close to me is going to another level. I need you to shout tonight like God's going to do what I have not seen what is be seated I'm coming because I don't think you've conceptualized what I just said to you please would you be seated I promise you I'm gonna let you shout in a minute God says I'm getting ready to so bless you hallelujah where's the church he said I'm getting ready to so bless you that this next level of favor is not just gonna pay off your debt watch this but it's gonna pay off the debt of who stuck with you when you didn't have nothing God said if you give me praise I'm gonna bless your best friend he said if you give me glory whoever had your back when you didn't have nothing who God is getting ready to bless be seated please hallelujah I'm coming ah, thank you holy God I need you to open up your mouth watch this I need you to shout for your friend that's going through I, I need you to praise him for your family member that's broke I, I need you to bless him for whoever having a rough time Be seated, please. Thank you, Holy God. Hallelujah. He said, when you go to that fish, y'all not ready to have church. He said, when you go to that fish, watch this, you got to make sure the hook is in its mouth. Hallelujah, because that's where the coins are. Y'all in a slow class, let me give it to you again. He said, all the money you need for that bill is in your mouth. But if your mouth is shut, then the bank will be closed. But I need those of y'all that know I will bless the Lord at all times. Would you open up your mouth like I serve a God who's able to keep me from falling? If the folk around you don't shout, move away from there. But let the redeemed of the Lord shout right now like it's in your mouth. Hey. Hey. Thank you. Be seated, please. How much? Be seated, please. Thank you, Holy God. Would you be seated for just one moment? Hallelujah. Be seated for just one moment. I, I don't need you to look at your neighbor. Just elbow him. Tell him it's in your mouth. Hallelujah. I got the wrong church tonight. Hallelujah. I'm the one that's A or me. What's wrong with y'all? I say elbow your neighbor and tell him it's in your mouth. God 
said, kingdom, if y'all shout tonight, I'm not paying little bills. He said, if you shout, I'm paying your biggest bill. If you open up your mouth, I'm paying all student loans. I'm paying. I can't hear nobody. I dare you to shout for the mortgage, shout for the car note, shout for the insurance, shout for tuition, shout for legal bills, shout for hospital. Be seated, please. He says, I want you to throw the line out. Hallelujah. God, I heard something from heaven. I, hallelujah. I'm trying to move, but I feel something. Hallelujah. I don't know who this is for, but for 50 of y'all with crazy faith, God just told me to tell you, it's paid for. I, I, I can't hear nobody. I need you to open up your mouth like it's already paid for. You ain't got it in the bank. It don't match your credit, but it's paid for. Oh. Hallelujah. Says I need you. Throw the line out with the hook. This is gonna mess you up. And there's no bait. All you got is the hook with no bait. God says, I am going to make your idea attractive, watch this, while unfinished. You don't even have everything together. God help me for the presentation. Hallelujah. But God's going to find you secret donors. Hallelujah. People who are getting ready to invest in your idea and you don't even got all the paperwork together. I can't hear nobody. God says, I need you to worship me tonight for the stuff that's unfinished. Hallelujah. I don't even feel comfortable showing it to folk, but I still believe God's hand is on it. Some of y'all that are not dreamers don't shout with us. But with those of you that are trusting God for something, would you lift up that hand and open up your mouth like God, I bless you for the stuff that ain't finished. Hallelujah. They it ain't finished, but I trust him. Hallelujah. Um, you don't need a net. Did you hear what I just said? You don't need a net. You only need one client. You only need one referral. God, help me in here. You only need one meeting. Where's my worshipers? You, you only need one phone call. Huh? You only need one recommendation. Where are my worshipers? You, you only need one lunch. God said, you better watch what I do because I'm getting ready to cut out some steps. What it took for other people to get done is not going to be your testimony. You just going to have to throw it out there. He said, Jamal, tell Bishop Perry, tell Kingdom, I, I do not want them to have a net. Um, watch this. Because they don't have time to sort through dead fish. <laughs> I don't have time to throw stuff back. Whatever I get in this season, I'm keeping it. God help me, y'all don't know when to shout. He said, you ain't gonna lose another deal, another opportunity. And for 50 of you, you ain't gonna lose another dime. You done wasted too much stuff in too many areas. But God said, this time we playing for keeps. He said, take the first fish that comes up. 
I do not want you cursed with too many options. So the next thing will be the thing. God, you, you just missed that. I, I said the next thing will be the thing. I'm telling you, the next time your phone rings, you better start shouting. We're, before you ever open up the email, you ought to shout, I'll take it. God said the next thing will be the thing. You won't have to weigh the options for the super deep people. You won't have to pray about it. When it comes, you'll know it's the right fit. That this is what I have been waiting for. God, I feel you're right through here. Jesus never told Peter. Watch this. He never told Peter to clean the fish. Uh, um, he, he, he never told him to cut the fish. He said it was in the fish's mouth. God, help me. He, he, he didn't want him to think that the miracle would be felt in the guts. Hallelujah. I, I know some of you are not going to like this flesh. So what I've been doing the last three months is I've been cutting your flesh back. God help me so it has hurt you. You done gone through seasons of rejection and loneliness and isolation and you didn't understand why God has put you in this position. But God said, I need you to stop trusting your flesh. It ain't in your flesh. It's um, what's in the mouth will make it manifest. And here's what's amazing, y'all, is, um, is nobody has ever taken the logical next step. How in the world could this fish bite the hook, hear me, with corn still in his mouth? Y'all missed that. I, uh, how, how'd he bite on the hook? with coins in his mouth. What you are getting ready to profess tonight house will not match your credit score, the job that line up with your education and they trying to figure out how did you get all of that? Because God says whatever is in your mouth is getting ready to manifest. Hallelujah. Speak those things that are not as though they already are. Whatsoever you ask in my name, it shall be done. Can I give you the remix? He said, if you ask in my name, I'll put it in your name. You, Y'all just missed that. He, he said, whatever you ask in my name, I'm going to put it in your name. This is just for those of y'all watching who are asking God, here's your shout, for something expensive, for something that don't match your budget. Would you open up your your mouth like the money ain't my issue. I gotta trust God knowing I can't afford it. And here's what you're missing. Hallelujah. Here's what you're missing is that um, this tax, I don't think too many of y'all are gonna shout right through here, is not for the government, it's for the church. This is going to be the, the strangest shout you've ever given in church, I promise you. Watch this. So this tax is not to build highways. It's not for schools. It's not for public servants. Y'all are getting ready to miss it. This tax, he says, is to pay for what the ministry envisions. I knew y'all weren't going to shout about this. God says, here is the litmus test of your maturity.
is that when you thought the money was for you, you tear the church up. But if you believe God is going to meet every financial need for this house, that whatever the bishop has a vision for, God is going to release the resources for. I can't hear nobody. If you satisfied with where y'all are now, don't shout with us. But can you imagine what the bishop could do if money wasn't an issue? I need the members of this church. If you believe that everything God wants you to do for this city is already paid for, would you open up your mouth like you see God doing it? Like God is bringing a resource. And here's the key, please. Um, if you'll be seated, I only got two more times to tell you that. Um, thank you. Uh, the key, ladies and gentlemen, the key strings, please, softly. The key is that um, he says to Peter, what well, Peter don't even understand at the time of the pronouncement of the instruction, is I'm going to help you find money, here it is, in places people don't look. So I am setting you up for unconventional loans. The money you need will not come from the bank. He says, I'm getting ready to give it to you with no interest. God, I got a rough crowd in here. Now, if, if you don't have, here's the crazy part. If you don't have past due bills, if you don't have past due bills, then this miracle won't make sense for you. But if you know God is in a place where he can release, here's the word, retroactive blessings. He gonna bless you for some stuff that you should have had back in February. But God said, I'm getting ready to make it back up to you. For every dime they borrowed and didn't pay back, I'm getting ready to line your pocket. He said, I'm getting ready to make it work for you. I'm getting ready to make it work for you. Watch this. Um, because you were working and you weren't thinking about the money. He said, you had, Jesus, 5,000 people. If you had just raised the offering on that hill, the taxes would have been paid. But you did ministry, watch this first lady, um, with the liability of the neglect of self-care. That you did some stuff to take care of the house while your own house was under. God help me, you, you're making a way for other people's kids. And your, your own children are barely skirting by. You're the kind of person you love too hard and you give too much and you forgive too fast. Hallelujah. Now, when you struggle, folk don't even know you're struggling because they're used to you being strong. So nobody ever asked, do you need anything? I can't hear nobody. But God said, now nah, I'm getting ready to do it for you. Watch this, because you have suffered. Here's where 50 of y'all need to shout. You suffered in silence. That folk didn't even know how bad it was, but you kept trusting God. And God said, watch me do it. Something is getting ready to happen. For those of you who are anointed and facing financial difficulty. And y'all, y'all really missed the miracle. And I hope you'll get it. My time is up is the tax collectors only ask pastor about Jesus taxes they never mention what Peter owed see if you're going to love this and Pete never said anything about his past due taxes to Jesus I'm finished my time is up pastor Hill will have a better sermon Sunday let me just give this to you real fast watch this God says I am tonight getting ready to meet the needs of unspoken issues. 
So the stuff you have not discussed is what I'm getting ready to handle. God, I can't hear nobody in here. He, he said, I don't need folk in your business. Just know I got you. Hallelujah. He said, here's the worshipers. I hope y'all will give God glory for it. He said, if you bless me in public, I'm going to take care of you in private. God, I wish I was at kingdom. He said, if you bless me in public, I'm going to take care of you in private. I need everybody in this room. Would you open up your mouth and give him glory for your private stuff? I, I need you to worship him for the issues you ain't talking about. You only got 30 seconds. I need that hand lifted. I need that mouth open. God, I need you to handle it before they shut my lights off. I, I need you to deal with it. I don't want to lose this house. I, I need you to handle it. I don't want to go to the church for help. Help me in my private issue. That hand is lifted. Hallelujah. God bless my private issues. Hallelujah. Would you lift that hand as high as you see yourself? Lord, bless my private issues. Hallelujah. Folk don't even know I'm robbing Peter to pay Paul to pay back Bartholomew. They got no idea. I got folk hating on me and I ain't got nothing. They got, I can't hear nobody. I don't even know how I haven't committed suicide. How I haven't jumped off the bridge. I got no idea how I'm still breathing and still serving. God told me to tell you, I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging for bread. Lift that hand as high as you can. Hallelujah. God has given me to bless you in private issues. Because you're blessed in publicly. I don't want to embarrass you. I want to empower you. Pastor Perry told me in the back to, to be at home. I want to do that. Lift that hand as high as you can. Those of you who are in this room and you're facing an immediate emergency, fiscal crisis. I don't care about what these people say, how they look at you, if they roll their eyes. None of them can help you. But you're at a place of imminent crisis. You may lose the car. Child, you may put out a private school. Utilities, you may get cut off. Car insurance has relapsed. If that's where you are, would you meet me at this altar very quickly? Hallelujah. I, I don't need you to come because your friend is coming. I need you to come because I need God to do emergency intervention. Come on, come on, come right. Hallelujah. I tell the members of our church in Baltimore, I tell the members of our church in Baltimore what I tell you tonight, watch this, lift your hands as high as you see yourself going. Like you believe this is a season of elevation. God says, when I bless you, it won't just be for you, but I'm gonna bless the people who are connected to you. I didn't mean to keep you this long, Bishop, but I, I want to bombard heaven. Would you do me a favor? If you are graced enough that you don't have to be at the altar tonight, you're graced enough you don't have to be at the altar. Would you stretch your hands towards the altar? Hallelujah. I just want to hear a sound of worship. Like God, I trust you for it. Come on, open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Come on, I can't hear anybody.
hand lifted. I want somebody's hand in your hand, even while it's lifted. Somebody's hand is in your hand, even while it's lifted. Inconsistency with the text. Jesus says, when I move this time, it won't just be for you, but I'm going to bless you so much that you're going to be able to pay off somebody else's expenses. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. I said, he's going to bless you so much. You're going to be able to pay off somebody else's expenses. I want you for just 30 seconds. Would you open up your mouth and believe God through your worship that whoever's hand you're holding, God is going to pay the bill. Come on, open up your mouth. Whatever bill they got, God is getting ready. I can't hear no worshipers. I can't hear any worshipers. God is getting ready to pay the bill. He's getting ready. He's getting ready. I speak blessing over every lifted hand that God will bless in an unusual way that God will exceed your expectation. You'll do what no other power can do. Those of you who believe by faith that you serve Jehovah Jireh, would you clap your hands and open up your mouth? I say clap your hands. Open up your mouth. to the hug somebody tell them it's taken care of it's taken care of it's taken care of hallelujah you may be seated we're going home in three minutes hallelujah I said it's taken care of did you hear what I just said? It's taken care of. Y'all still ain't shouting. I said, it's taken care of. I wish your faith would kick in. It's taken care of. I want to say something to you. Please hear me with rapt attention. Too many of you, Benjamin Elijah Mays, the